Uh, so yesterday we caught up with the Mayo manager Stephen Rochford off the back of the AIB announcement that they will be partners for the next five years. Uh, they've announced a five-year extension to their GEA sponsorship back in club and county. It's one of the biggest deals in the GEA because obviously it runs across both the club and inter-county seasons. Uh, so it's an always-on, all-year-round thing. And um, it turns out they've got loads of people who work for AIB who are um, heavily involved with the inter-county and club scene. A bunch of them came into us yesterday. We'll bring you some stuff from James O'Donoghue and Colin Cooper a little bit later on next week ahead of the uh, Kerry game. Maybe we'll play on Thursday? Yeah, Kerry are playing this week. Yeah, so maybe we'll play on Thursday for you. The extension includes the AIB Club Championships, the AIB Camogie Club Championships and the AIB All-Ireland Football Championships. Uh, here's how we get on with Stephen. All right, I'm delighted to say with us is Stephen Rochford in the middle of the campaign. How are you doing? Uh, not too bad, not too bad. Be beautiful day here in Dublin, so um, yeah. Not too bad. Yeah, the um, the draw was made obviously this morning, and look, I know you can't say that uh, it's a it's a friendly draw, but you didn't get Tyrone, which I think we were all hoping that it would be a Mayo Tyrone game just to get that extra bit of spice in the first round of the championship. Probably you were thinking rugby is over. What's going to happen on the ninth of June? Need something. Um, look, the the reality is that you know any of the teams that were in the draw this morning, they're all starting from the same point. They're all after coming off a disappointing. Uh, performance or result in, in in the provincial championship. So, um, yeah, there'll be there'll, I'm sure there'll be plenty of external noise saying Mayo will be favourites, and but that was the same against Derry last year and for Man of the Year before, and we struggled over them games because, you know, when you're when you're so invested in the provincial championship and you're 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 really trying to to, to edge out that winning performance and that you know your your confidence takes a, a little bit of a you know a, goes on a little bit of shaky ground, and so. That's the one thing about the the qualifiers as well that allows you to try and build that up. Um, so you're somewhere in between. Um, logistically, it's 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 good. You didn't have to go to Waterford, you know, or, or up to Antrim, or maybe take a flight to, to London. So the them elements are, are better. But it's going to be a tricky game. I've absolutely no doubt. We were looking back at um, the the results last year, and the season was one of the most ridiculous in GA history. It's like. Uh, extra time, a replay, extra time, um, eventually another replay, and then another draw until you get to the All-Ireland Final. It's like an absolutely crazy season. Did you have time at any point in the off-season to look back and go, wow? Um, pr probably probably not really around the wow because you were sort of nearly doing so. It's never a wow because it would have been wow if you'd won it. Um, that's the reality. Um, the element that when you're when you're in it, you're able to take sort of a uh, sense of right, yeah, our fitness levels are good, or you know we're doing this better, and you can you know in nearly in real time you can really sense the progression. Sometimes maybe with a three week break of that, you don't know where you're going to be from one game to the other. But we felt you know um, even coming out of the the Derry game and that we didn't we, di we didn't blow the lights out by any means, but we actually did a lot of things well in that game as well. Like we. We had 27 scoring opportunities that we didn't convert. You know, 27 additional ones, so between the goalie saving or woodwork or wides. So we weren't taking shots from the halfway line or out on the sideline. So we were doing maybe 80% of the, 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 the sort of groundwork. Um, and then, then we pro progressed that against Clare, better against against Cork, and moments of sort of, we sort of take concentration lapsed and we conceded goals against Cork and sort of put ourselves under pressure but you know genuinely when we got back to Crow Park we seemed to, 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 to slip into a better gear and I think that's probably you know where, where the, the that sort of experience within the group is that they know that if you get back into the into Drumcondra and you see the the, the, the Crow Park that they're able to step it up a level that's that in 2018 is a it's a fair distance away at this moment in time um, but you know we look forward to the 9th of June and sort of trying to build build, build a challenge from there. Well, when you mentioned that data there, the 27 opportunities that weren't taken, is it a case of really focusing in on that aspect of the game and training it, or is it just a matter of believing in the likes of Andy Moore and Killian and Diarmid and thinking, all right, these guys have been there and done that at the biggest stage, this will come right eventually, and patience is the key? Yeah, it's, it's, it's probably more... 
probably more the first. You know, yes, you, you understand that you have the quality that's in there, um, but you got to put in the work and you got to put in the, the the sharpness and you got to put in the practice elements um, that are required in that. Um, and the, the lads were doing that, but sometimes it can be just just a tad off. Um, and as, you know, as I said, if if your confidence is a little bit stretched, you know, that can manifest itself into something that's a little bit bigger. But um, as I said, you know. A lot of the ingredients were right, you know. We just hadn't, you know, we just hadn't had the oven maybe at the right, mm. right gauge or whatever it is. And thankfully, we were able to get that right, and we were able to progress it. And that was the one thing I was saying about it that you were saying, okay, well, we're nearly, we're, we're doing a lot of this right, and next game is coming next week to, to get it, to get it better. And you know, the 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 element of the, as I alluded to earlier was that the teams going into the qualifiers, you know, very similar. You know, confidence for all the teams is a little bit. Um, Questionable. Their form isn't as good as the teams that go through the front door. So you know there's there's a lot of similarities in it, and you just need to be able to prep physically and mentally uh, as best you can. And then you're no not quite hoping from hope type of thing, but that that your performance levels are going to be good enough then to to, to get you that win. Is the confidence better this year, given that you've been through this before and there is that kind of know-how, or because it was such a hard road last year, um, is it the opposite effect? No, oh, um, like like the confidence, the morale is is, 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 is quite positive um, within the group. Um, How you do know, you work on that though? Like, what do you talk about it? And do you, you, you just go back and sort of write your your your, your starting point that you look at, you know, what went wrong or what went well, but you didn't ne- nearly, maybe you didn't execute um, as well as you should. Um, you know, we we, we we have the element that you know. We played that game for two thirds of the game with with only fourteen men, um, but seventy four minutes into that game, that game is level, and you're playing against a team that has as good a form line as Dublin. Yeah. Um, and and you know, Dublin are the the benchmark for for all of us based on their performances and on, uh, on their silverware. So, you know, you you, you sort of you ha- you have to take some level of perspective. And you're right. missing a lot of your best players. Yeah. Well, you know, some of them aren't available or some of them don't have the same match time. But that's, that they're the, they're the cards you're dealt and, you know, so be, so be it. We still put ourselves in a place to, to, to win that game. Never got ourselves in front. So that's something that we, we, we should have done. Like, we, we opened really well in, in the game, but we never put it on the scoreboard. Um, and it's something that's that's put over the Mayo team, you know, over the last number of years as in relation to scoring fours. But I think if you, you look at from the the Derry game on last year and you look at what their scoring rate is versus anybody, and I think it's it's you're able to see that it's a match for anybody. But they're all that's all history now. It's the same as you saying, well, do you trust in the players? You do. But you can't rely necessarily on past performance. You have to be able to deliver on the seventy minutes on the 9th of June or whatever it is mm. that comes again. There must be kind of an element of trying to put all sentimentality aside then when you say that, as in look at the great memories. Say in, just hypothetically this year, you can't get too wound up with the amazing memory that you have of Andy Moore and killing Kerry last year. You've got to park that and as you say, it's based on the here and the now. Yeah, like I mean, um, you know, uh, somebody's season can be over and, uh, you know, on the click of a finger, uh, you something that happened six weeks ago, never mind six or nine months ago, is, is totally different. Teams then could be shaping up differently against you. Um, is the form of all your team coming together in relation to, I think like, you know, you, you allude to the, the Kerry game, the Dublin game, we had real consistency throughout the, the, the team and our performance levels were, 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 were hitting the right, the right levels. We, we wouldn't have been, even if we had come out with a, a one-point win against Goal, we would still be critical of ourselves as regards understanding that we're a work in progress and that everything wasn't perfect, you know, but the result dictates the narrative and, you know, we're old enough to, to accept that as well. Yeah, I, I mean, the narrative around Mayo, though, is so tortured and so um, polarised. And, uh, like, you're in the middle of that and... That, that can't be an easy situation to be in where the team comes in for criticism, the management comes in for criticism and you have to just go about your day job going, all right, well, we've been in the last two Ireland finals and a kick of a ball between us and the um, now team that has done three in a row. Is it hard to bite your tongue in those instances? Um, well, you sort of try and remove yourself as much from it as, as possible. Um, but, you know, we're, we're maybe it was a small enough county as well. Uh, my, my, my job with AIB means that I'm in the public eye a bit, you hear a bit, you get 
a couple of letters sent to the house to get, to, to, to offer that that sort of uh, insight. But it's it's um, it, it is what it is. Like you know, like life is tough. Yeah. So, but were you prepared for that part of the job at all? Because nobody surely takes you aside yeah. and says, "Here, listen. By the way, this is going to be the most annoying thing you ever go through." Uh, yeah. A bunch no. Of lads are no. Stop you no. I was, I was talking with guys um, oh, or earlier today around um, playing Cork in our first game, my first game back in National League back in 2016, and we get a real tanking below in Porky Rin and uh, sort of as much as you think you're 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 ready for this, that step up is is, is massive, and you know all of the. You know, there's a l- plenty of commentators and all that sort of saying this is the end of that team and all that, and and that probably was a little bit more difficult to handle at that time. But I'm well removed from that now, as in so far as I understand our own group a lot more, um, and I've seen them at the coal face delivering under under uh, that element of pressure, but but dealing with it on the field um, as well. And they're a great bunch of guys, and I really, really trust them. And you know, we can only control what we do within the the, the four walls of our dressing room and, and our pitch. Um, and we look to try and change that narrative, but we've no control over. You're you're on Twitter. I don't know how often you actually log in and, and check it. Do you use it as something occasionally just to check no, scores to, and sports to validate, and stuff? validate our performance you, or something? No, I don't. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I would have stepped. I, I would have been. You know, when I was involved with Kerr Finn there, I would probably have had a, more of a social media presence and uh, and that. Uh, you know, one of the learnings is uh, when you go into that is st- step back. It's it's unfiltered. It's um, you know, and I, and, I, and I say this with a little bit tongue in cheek. You know, everybody's an expert. You know, I'm talk, talk, talking to somebody last winter and saying if you looked at the game ten years ago, there was to- maybe typically you know four or five. Uh, mainstay GA correspondence in the media or whatever. Now we have maybe 105,000 uh, uh, correspondents or experts in it. But that's just the way of life is now in 2018. And, you know, if you want to be distracted by it, log on to Twitter every hour. If you want to stay focused on what you are, well, then do your work on video analysis and do your work in relation to understanding where the team are and where they need to progress to. So. You do, you do need to remove yourself. Would you flick it on when you're watching the Champions League final or uh, American football or whatever, just to, like, yeah. so you still use it the way everybody else does? Yeah, a, a bit of that, but, you know, following a bit of, you know, Leinster rugby and sort of, you know, try and get, get some of those insights. Um, so, yeah, a, a, little, a little bit like that, but you have two kids under the age of four, you don't get much time, and the smallest lad is mad for the phone. <laughs> so, so, yeah, to try and keep peace, that, 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 that gets hidden a, a little bit as well. Yeah. Sometimes I wonder why people get involved in uh, intercounty football. But if you've got two kids under four, it's to get out of the house. I have three <laughs> under six. I'd love to be involved in an intercounty team. Like, I have to go, I have to go. Yeah, well, um, there is, there, there is, like... My, Look, uh, no, it's okay, you don't have to... Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll, well, I'll, I'll just say, my, 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 we, we were training yesterday and we were doing a bit of video analysis and uh, gone for a good part of the day and my wife sent me a text, are you going to... You gone tra- training day or a training camp? You know, so <laughs> that gives you a sense of of of, of at home that uh, yeah you you know you can be when you're gone for a good length of time it can be felt at home as well. Yeah, it is, and I think that's also part of the reason why you know I bring it up facetiously, but actually to point out that um, the the. The desire to be the manager of a, an intercounty team is something obviously that when you manage you want to do and particularly when it's a group of players uh, who are as talented as this group. But the other side of it is that you can't do it forever. Like the, the Brian Cody's of this world uh, and the Mickey Hart's of this world are so unique because they've lasted for so long. Everybody else has a, a very limited time frame really. Um, and I don't know if you feel like that at all but if, if there is just a natural end in sight for intercounty managers and that's how it's going to be. Managers are going to do three to five years max and that'll be it. Um, well, look, I suppose you're you're looking at Jim Gavin and Eamon Fitzmaurice, well, in the football sense. You know, they've been they've been there now, whatever, five, six, maybe seven years or, or so on. I'm not, not not quite sure. And I know, you know, you can sort of say, well, like when you have success in trophies, maybe it's, it's that bit easier. Um, for me, in many ways, I, I see myself as being very privileged uh, and privileged that you know I wasn't good enough as as a footballer to play for Mayo, um, uh, and I've been. Sort of honoured that um, that the Mayo people in Mayo have, have sort of trusted me to sort of lead, you know, what have what have been great ambassadors for for, for Mayo, um, possibly the finest uh, team to come out of 
Mauro Mayo uh, over a long period of time since obviously the teams that won the All Ireland. So um, there's a th- th- there's a privileged element t- to be in that, um, and you understand that if you're going to be challenging at the very top, you're going to come under more scrutiny. So like I mean. That's just like we can see that across whatever sports yeah. it, it, it is. You know, people don't spend as much time talking about the managers uh, in the mid table in the Premiership as they do about Mourinho or, or Klopp or, or, or Pep or whoever th- these are. It's just the way of the world, and I, I'd rather us be at the top, challenging, uh, being uh, critiqued, than sort of being struggling in the middle of the table. It's better to be relevant than not. Stephen, great yeah. stuff. Thanks, Cheers. really, for joining us. Thanks, lads.